Hello, everyone. Welcome to Business School 101. To better understand how firms can profit by expanding globally, we need to understand two important terms, learning effects and economies of scale. In this video, I will explain these two terms to you. First, learning effects. For companies, learning effects refer to cost savings that come from learning by doing. Labor productivity increases over time as individuals learn the most efficient ways to perform particular tasks. Equally important, in new production facilities, managers typically learn how to manage the new operation more efficiently over time. Hence, production costs decline due to increasing labor productivity and management efficiency, which increases the firm's profitability. For individuals, learning effects mean that the more you learn, the more proficient, productive, and efficient you will be. People learn from cumulative experiences, and those experiences are critical for many professional skills such as code writing, legal practice, medical surgery, and many others. The following diagram is a representation of the learning curve effect. As you can see on the x-axis, we have taken the number of lots or batches of goods produced, and on the y-axis we are considering the labor hours required per lot of good produced. It is clear from the diagram that the labor hours required to produce each lot is higher when the firm is producing the first or initial few lots or batches of goods. The labor hours required per lot of production to produce a second lot or later lots on the other hand is lower. As per the depicted diagram, the labor hours required to produce the first lot is close to 4 hours, while the labor hours required for producing the second lot is close to 2 hours. The labor hour requirement per lot goes down further by the time a company is producing the third and the fourth lot of the good or product. The learning curve effect can be further explained by using the following data table. From the table, it is clear that the average number of hours required to produce a batch of particular good, say X, is going down on account of learning curve effect. If we assume that the labor cost per hour is $500 and this labor cost per hour stays fixed, then the average cost of labor required to produce a batch of good X goes down on account of increased output from the same amount of labor hour input. Thus, as per the table, the average labor cost per batch is going down from $5,000 to $3,000 by the time the company is producing the sixth batch of good X, and this happens on account of the learning curve effect. Many business managers and scholars suggested that learning effects tend to be more significant when a technologically complex task is repeated, because there is more that can be learned about the task. However, no matter how complex the task is, learning effects typically start to diminish after passing a threshold. Previous researchers indicated that learning effects typically are more important during the startup period of a new process. Second, economies of scale. Economies of scale are cost advantages reaped by companies when production becomes efficient. Companies can achieve economies of scale by increasing production and lowering costs. This happens because costs are spread over a large number of goods. Costs can be both fixed and variable. Let's use Microsoft's operating system as an example. Between 2007 and 2009, Microsoft spent around $25 billion on research and development to develop its new Windows 7 operating system. This research and development expense was a fixed cost Microsoft had to incur before a single copy of Windows 7 was sold. However, once the initial version of the new software was completed, the marginal cost of each additional copy was close to zero, especially for copies sold online. So, if Microsoft only sells 1 million copies of Windows 7, the average cost will be $25,000 per copy. However, if Microsoft can sell 1 billion copies of Windows 7, the average cost will be reduced to $25. Generally, there are two main types of economies of scale, external and internal. External economies of scale are dependent on external factors that include tax reductions, government subsidies, an improved transportation network, or a highly skilled labor pool. In contrast, internal economies of scale are controlled by the company's internal factors and can be further categorized into technical economies of scale, purchasing economies of scale, and financial economies of scale. First, technical economies of scale are economies of scale achieved via technology. That is, 
larger businesses more readily have the capital to invest in newer and better technology, which can bring them cost advantages smaller businesses are otherwise unable to achieve. Second, purchasing economies of scale, also called buying economies of scale, are economies of scale achieved via buying in bulk. That is, larger businesses more readily have the cash and output to warrant buying materials in much larger quantities, which can bring them per unit cost advantages smaller businesses are otherwise unable to achieve. Lastly, financial economies of scale are economies of scale enabled by more favorable rates of borrowing. That is, larger businesses are seen by lenders as more reliable or worthy of credit due to their size, whereas smaller businesses will tend to pay higher rates of interest. For firms wanting to expand globally, economies of scale have a number of extra sources. One is the ability to spread fixed costs over a large volume. For example, the fixed cost of establishing a new production line to manufacture semiconductor chips normally costs over $1 billion. Similarly, developing a new drug and bringing it to market could cost pharmaceutical companies hundreds of millions of dollars and take decades. The only way to recoup such high fixed costs may be to sell the product worldwide, which reduces average unit costs by spreading fixed costs over a large volume. Second, a firm may not be able to attain an efficient scale of production unless it serves global markets. In the automobile industry, for example, an efficiently scaled factory is one designed to produce about 500,000 units a year. Automobile firms would prefer to produce a single model from each factory, since this eliminates the cost associated with switching production from one model to another. If domestic demand for a particular model is only 100,000 units a year, the inability to attain a 500,000 unit output will drive up average unit costs. Finally, as global sales increase the size of an enterprise, so too does its bargaining power with suppliers and government increases, which may allow it to attain economies of scale in purchasing and financing, bargaining down the cost of key inputs and boosting profitability that way. For example, as the world's third largest retail company, Costco uses its enormous sales volume as a lever to bargain down the price it pays suppliers for merchandise sold through its stores. After introducing the learning curve and the economies of scale, some of you might feel they are quite similar. Actually, these two concepts are independent of each other. Whether one is more important than the other seems to rely on the level of complexity within the task of a company. If something is simple, but takes a lot of capital to be done, economies of scale will take place. An example of a simple capital-intensive business would be the operation of a strip mine. Once a business has the plot of land in which it wants to mine, all it needs is more equipment and relatively easily trained operators for that equipment. The more equipment, the more the company can carry out of the mine and the cheaper each pound of rock is to take out. Conversely, throwing capital at different problems is not always the solution. Sometimes human capital is more important to the success of a business. For example, some of the most expensive watches in the world are still made by hand in Switzerland. These watches are miracles of the jeweler's craft, even if the best made watch will never keep time as well as a $20 digital watch. The companies that make these watches position their wares as luxury goods so that they are not in the same market as the cheap digital timepiece. They are made at a small scale for discerning buyers. Here is where the learning curve is important. Well-trained watchmakers will be able to make more watches faster and with higher accuracy. This allows the company that employs these artisans to have lower costs per unit. It also discourages new entrants to the market, keeping the retail value of the watches they sell inflated. With the two examples, it becomes possible to say that both the learning curve and economies of scale are critical to the success of companies. The important difference is the human factor between which one will be more important. So, do you have any thoughts or questions about the learning effect and the economies of scale? Please leave your thoughts in a comment below. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.